Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we are going to talk about exactly what you might need to get started with Bitcoin mining. Now if you're not familiar with Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, we do have another episode about that, so you should definitely check out the link in the video description. We're also going to show you Wheels' crazy ghetto rig that he's using right now. See, I'm, reve oh, I'm revealing it for mining. Stay tuned for that. Well, I guess we just did show it to you, but stay tuned is in the script, so. So what do you need in order to mine? Well, really all you need is any computer, any graphics card. I mean, you can mine on CPUs, but it's really not that effective compared to graphics cards. So any graphics card will do. Before we get started though, let's just get something straight. This mining is going to push your hardware. It will pin your GPU or CPU or both at 100% and keep it there. Doing this can and probably will decrease the lifespan of your hardware, especially if it's not properly cooled. Also, if you're planning on doing this with your laptop, don't. Please just don't. Those machines are not made to run at 100% load on all the components all the time. This kind of high temperature, high stress environment will kill your laptop. Do yourself a favor and only do this with desktop components with adequate cooling. All right, so while, like I said before, basically any computing hardware can be used to mine, uh, that's CPUs or GPUs, GPUs are much better, but let's put that in real terms. So for example, a 3930K mines at 66.6 .6 mega hash per second, which is basically just evil. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, a single Radeon HD 7970, on the other hand, does more than 10 times that, 825 mega hash per second. So that is the unit that we use to measure the effectiveness of a particular part for mining. The other thing to factor in is that you need an additional an entire computer for every CPU that you add, whereas you can add multiple graphics cards to a single PC. The next thing to note is that when it comes to graphics cards, AMD's architecture right now is much faster than NVIDIA's for Bitcoin mining. So 280 and 290 X's and non X's are pretty much the sweet spot right now for Bitcoin mining. However, none of this means anything if you're talking about really serious Bitcoin mining because then you're going to want to go with an ASIC card. But before we get into that, we have to discuss yeah, these are two power cords coming into this 900D right here. Power consumption. Bitcoin mining is all about efficiency. You have to mine at an efficient rate. Having a 7970 mining at 800 mega hash is great, but it takes up to 300 watts of power. It seems a little bit high. I'm not sure about that, you guys. But it takes a significant amount of power, not to mention the $400 price tag. So you got to buy the card outright, then you have to power the thing. Now enter ASIC cards. These are dedicated pieces of hardware designed specifically to mine Bitcoins. They are much more energy efficient and orders of magnitude faster so that the money you make mining coins is not offset by the money you're spending on hardware and then on power. So for example, the USB-based Blue Fury calculates at 2,500 mega hash per second and uses only 2.5 watts. Negligible power and only costs about $300. $300 dollars <clears throat> USB dongle, but, but I mean you can mine bitcoins with it. Anyway, when comparing that against the 7970, the choice is pretty clear. But keep in mind that ASIC cards do nothing except mine. You can't game on these. Actually, they won't even have a display output. There's only, this is only one example, and there are actually tons of new designs that go all the way up to 7.5 terahash per second. That's 7.5 million megahash per second. So Bitcoin mining is turning into very serious business. So you might be asking yourself, then what's with all the shortages of AMD graphics cards? Why isn't everybody going with ASIC cards? Well, as I explained in yesterday's episodes, those are being used for mining, but not necessarily Bitcoin mining. They can be used for Litecoin mining, the second most popular cryptocurrency as of today, although who knows, this might all change very, very quickly. Litecoin is resistant to ASIC hardware for now due to the need for expensive GPU memory. So GPUs 
are still the way to go for mining Litecoins. The 290X in this case is king. So basically at this point, guys, if you're going to mine Bitcoins, go out and get yourself some ASIC hardware. There's an ASIC card in the description below. You can check that out. There's also a calculator that takes into account calculation speed costs, power costs, and shows you how long it would take to break even after buying these cards. Some as fast as nine days based on the current price of Bitcoin, which is kind of doing that. Um, however, if you just want to get your feet wet, then you can go for it anyways on your GPU, or you could even use your GPU and try going for Litecoins, because who knows which one of these cryptocurrencies is going to do well in the end. All right, so now for a treat. This, friends, is Wheels' Frankenstein system. Under this wall of 120 millimeter fans, 12 of them to be exact, I'm just gonna, they're actually just zip tied together and then balanced on the side here and taped on the top. So I'm gonna pull them off. They're just plugged into like random fan hubs and stuff like that. You can see I got my wall of fans here. So under this wall of fans is three 290Xs, you might have noticed that some of these power co cables are different colors because there are two power supplies. There is an EVGA uh, 1000 watt P2 power supply and a Corsair TX750M, so a total of 17, uh, 1750 watts of effective power that can be delivered to this system. Okay, so there's three 290X cards. There's also a 7990 for five GPUs. Okay, you can check out some, some of the NCIXCOM Instagram shots for some pictures of this being built. It also has a 3930K, 16 gigs of memory, although it should be noted that a ton of memory isn't necessarily essential for Bitcoin mining. Now, check out these thermometer probes. It is 59.3 degrees with the air coming out of the system and 21.1 degrees at the intake. That means that you are actually raising the temperature of the air inside this case by almost 40 degrees with the calculations that are going on inside. The hottest GPU core runs at 86 degrees Celsius because the fans have been cranked to 100%, making this system, oh, well, that'll be a problem. Hold on, hold on. Let's just move all the things. There we go, so those fans are running. Let's power this baby up making this system extremely loud once it's running. Oh yeah, I guess it's not actually mining right now, so whatever. Anyway, there were actually problems all week getting this thing working, and it blew out three separate breakers trying to find a location that it could actually be running at. So, okay, for this particular rig, um, Wheels is running CG Miner on Windows for now because it's only, only a few hours have been spent on the software setup, but Linux is actually better if you have the know-how. Uh, they're also, they haven't had much time to play around with the settings enough, but there is more performance to be had with overclocking and overvolting, and we'd love for you guys to stay tuned because NCIX has actually gotten a hold of some suppliers for PCI Express risers and open air cases that are perfect for mining, so you can actually install these risers in motherboards that don't necessarily have enough spacing for all these graphics cards, and you can just kind of put graphics cards all over the place and stuff like that. Also. Uh, <clears throat> Wheels may have pre-ordered a 600 giga hash ASIC card, so stay tuned to see that beast in action. And finally, Wheels is going to be doing a noobs setup guide and show you how to get all this started once uh, all the software stuff's been figured out. So guys, there are lots of updates to come. Stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this.